For this project, you're going to need a weight 3 or DK yarn. Mine is in a cotton polyester blend and I used about 400 yards of it. You'll need a 4mm crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and then a tape measure as well. Before getting started, you'll need to make a gauge swatch. My gauge for a 4x4 four four inch or 10x10 10 10 centimeter section was 5 stitches wide and 11 rows tall. You should make your swatch at least 6 inches wide and 6 inches tall or 15 inches wide and 15 inches tall to get an accurate measurement. To make the swatch, follow rows 1 through 3 of my video and then continue to repeat row 3 until you reach an appropriate length. For reference, I made 30 foundation slip stitches in row 1 to get about 16 inches or 15 centimeters um, wide. Before we get started with the back panel, you'll need to know one measurement, which is from one side of your shoulder to the other. So grab a tape measure, and we're going to start at one side of the shoulder, just about here, and then measure, <laughs> measure over to the other side of your shoulder. So something like this. Now for me, that's about 14 inches long, so that's the measurement I am going to use to get started with the back panel. So once you're done with that, come on back and we'll get started on this top. So once you have your gauge swatch and your shoulder measurement, we can now figure out how many foundation slip stitches we need to start with. So first, you want to take your shoulder measurement, for me that was 14 inches, and divide that by 4. So for example, 14 divided by 4 is 3.5, and we're going to call this measurement A. So now you want to take your measurement A and multiply it by the number of stitches that make up 4 inches across on your gauge swatch. So 4 inches across. So like I said, my gauge swatch was 5 stitches by 11 rows for a 4 by 4 section. So I will multiply my measurement A, which is 3.5, by 5. And that is going to equal 17.5. Now, because it's 17.5, I'm just going to round that up to 18, and this is going to be measurement B. Now, 18 is going to be the number of mesh stitches I want for the back of my top. That's going to be uh, 14 inches worth of stitches. So to figure out the number of foundation slip stitches we need to start with, you want to take whatever you got for your measurement B and multiply that by 3. So for me, 18 times 3 is 54 and this is going to be the number of foundation slip stitches I am going to start with so I promise that this is the only math section of this top um, nothing else difficult down the line so let's just get right on into it so getting started on the back panel we're gonna first make our row of foundation slip stitches so whatever number you got with all of those measurements that's what you're going to use for this first row so to start these foundation slip stitches you'll first chain up two one two and then you're going to insert your hook into the second chain from the hook or the very first chain that we made making sure to pick up both the front and back loops just like so. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through just that first chain and with two loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those two. All right so to do the second foundation slip stitch we're going to be working in the bottom chain I'm sorry the bottom stitch which is right down here so we want to pick up the front and back loops of this stitch down here as well. Okay, it's going to look something like this. Then we're just going to yarn over, pull through that bottom stitch only. 
and with two loops on your hook, you want to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. All right, so let's show you this again, maybe a little bit easier to see on the second time around. So we're going to insert our hook into the bottom stitch, which is right here. So we'll insert your hook into the bottom stitch. There we go, much easier to see. Making sure to pick up the front and back loops. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through that bottom stitch only. And with two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over, pull through both of those loops. All right, so I'll show you this one more time, guys. You can see I'm also working up this way rather than working to the side like you normally would. Just an easier way for you guys to see. So again, we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom stitch, which is right down here. Okay, you can see those bottom stitches a little bit easier now. Insert, making sure to pick up the front and back loops. Looks something like that. Then yarn over, pull through just the stitch. And with two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops. All right, so you are just going to continue doing this until you reach the number of stitches you got from the measurements we did. So for me, that's gonna be 54 stitches. And once you're done with that, come on back and I will show you how to get started with the mesh stitches. So I just finished my 54 foundation slip stitches and now it's time to move on to row two, which will be the beginning of our mesh stitch. So the first thing you wanna do is chain up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you wanna flip your work. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is skip the first two stitches and then we're gonna make a single crochet in the third stitch. So we're gonna count that very last foundation slip stitch as our first stitch, which is right here. So we're gonna skip one, two, and then insert a hook into the third stitch. Okay, and we're just making sure to pick up both the front and back loops. And then you're going to make one single crochet. Okay, so now what you want to do is chain up five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to skip two stitches and make a single crochet in the third stitch. So one, two, and three. Okay. So we're gonna chain up five again. Skip two stitches. One, two, make a single crochet in the third. So that's gonna be the repeating pattern that we're gonna do all the way down row two. So you're just gonna be chaining up five, skipping two stitches and making one single crochet in the third stitch always making, to, making sure that you're picking up both the front and back loops. So once you are back at the very end, I'll meet you there and we can finish this row off. Okay, and then for that very last one, you're just gonna place your last single crochet in the very last stitch. So we skip one, two, and then three. All right, and that is the end of row two. So for row two, I have 18 of these mesh stitches and you should have whatever you had for your measurement B, that's how many stitches you should have for your second row. So now moving on to row three, we are first going to chain up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're gonna flip your work and now you're gonna put one single crochet in this very first chain five space. So we're gonna insert through and make one single crochet. All right, so now you are going to chain up five. One, two, three, whoops, four, five. And you'll make one single crochet in the next chain five space. So you'll insert and make one single crochet. So we're just gonna be repeating that pattern. We're gonna chain up five. And then in the next chain five space, you're gonna make one single crochet. 
Okay, and you're just going to continue doing this all the way down row three. So I will meet you guys back at the very end. And then that very last chain five space, or I guess chain six space, you're gonna make one single crochet just like you've been doing. All right, and that is gonna be the end of row three. So it's gonna look something like this. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see. So for row four, all we're going to do is repeat row three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you are going to flip your row and you're gonna make one single crochet in that very first chain five space. So we'll insert, make our single crochet, and then we're going to chain up five and make one single crochet in the next chain five space. Oops. All right, so you're just gonna continue repeating. So you're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, five, then make one single crochet in the next chain five space and continue doing that all the way down row four. Okay, and in that very last chain space, we will make our single crochet to finish off row four. All right, so this is what it's looking like so far. Now what you're gonna do is just continue to repeat row three until you reach the length the desired length of your top. Okay, so I lied. We actually need one more measurement, which is going to be about how long you want your top to be. So take your tape measure and starting like somewhere kind of just like right below your collarbone, place your tape measure, measure it over your bust. For me, I'm going to stop mine like right under my bust right here. So it's about eight, eight and a half inches long. You can obviously keep going down though. And the reason why we're starting at our collarbone for this measurement is because we're going to be making shoulder parts that are going to be about four inches long. And with this kind of stitch, it stretches a lot too. So the shoulder strap will come down to about here. So anyways, once you have that, we can move right back into making the top and yeah. So for me, I'm going to continue doing this until I have about eight inches worth of this back panel so for me that's going to be about 22 um, rows based on my gauge but you need to make sure that this is ending on an odd row so for me what i'm going to do is just continue making this until i have 23 rows which will be a little bit over eight inches long so just continue repeating row three until you have your desired length and make sure to end on an odd row. All right, so I just finished my back panel. The final dimensions were about 14 inches wide and eight inches long. When I was measuring how long it was, I did kind of stretch it out a little bit like this. This stitch is super malleable, so <laughs> it can stretch out a lot if you want it to. All right, let's move right on to the shoulder straps. So to start the shoulder strap, you are going to start in the same place where you left off on the back panel. But before we get into that, I am going to make my straps a little over four inches wide, maybe about four and a half inches wide. So I'm going to be making my straps about six of my little mesh stitches wide. So if you want yours uh, wider or more narrow, you can add, subtract your mesh stitches um, to your preference. So to get started, we are first going to chain up six and then flip our work. So for me, like I said, I'm going to go over only six of our little chain spaces. And this is gonna be the exact same pattern that we were doing before. So I'm gonna place one single crochet in the very first chain space, chain up five, and then in the very next chain space, we are gonna make one single crochet. All right, and then we are just repeating that until I reach six of my mesh stitches. Three, four, five. All right, so this is my sixth 
chain space so I'm going to make my last single crochet in that space and that's going to be the end of row one for my first shoulder strap so now what I'm going to do is just repeat row one so I'm going to chain six flip my work and then in that first chain space we'll make one single crochet then you'll chain five and make one single crochet in the next chain space right here and then continue repeating that all the way down the row Alright, so in that last chain space, you're going to make a single crochet and that will finish up row two. So I'm going to continue repeating row one until I have a total of nine rows in this uh, shoulder. And that's going to be about three and a half inches long. So you can make the shoulder however long or short you want, but I suggest somewhere between three and a half and four inches. Now you want to make sure you're ending on an odd row because we want our hook to end up on this side, which is in the middle of our top because we are going to start increasing right after we finish our shoulder portion. So once you're done with that, come on back and we will start doing the front panels. Okay, so I just finished my nine rows for my shoulder and that's going to be about three and a half inches long. So again, you need to make sure that you are ending on an odd row. That way your hook is going to be on the inside of your top right here rather than the outside because we are now moving on to making our front panels and we're going to be increasing our front panels only on the inside of our top. So we're going to move right on into this. Now, really quick before we get started, our front panels are going to be the same number of rows as our back panels. So for my front panels, I'm going to make them both 23 rows long. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start this front panel with an increase. Now, you're first going to want to chain up six. I already had flipped this. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you'll turn your work. And now I'm going to make my first single crochet in the very first chain space, just like we've been doing. But now to make this an increase, I'm going to chain up five and then place another single crochet in this same chain space. So in this same chain space, we're making one more single crochet. Okay, so as you can see in the very first chain space, I now have two of these little chain spaces. So that's gonna be our increase. Now for the rest of the row, we're gonna follow this pattern as normal. So I'm gonna chain up five, and then in the next uh, chain space, I'm going to make one single crochet. All right, and I'm going to continue to repeat that all the way down the row. So I'll chain up five and then make one single crochet in the next chain. So I'll meet you guys back at the very end of this row. All right, so in the very last chain, we are going to make one single crochet. And that is going to finish up the first row in our uh, front panel. So now for row two, you're going to chain up six, flip your work, and you're just going to continue with the normal pattern. So we're going to do no increases for row two. So that means in the very first chain space, I'm going to make one single crochet. Then I'm going to chain up five and make one single crochet in the next chain space. And I'm going to continue doing that all the way down this row. Okay, so in these last two chain spaces, you're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and then one single crochet in the very last chain space. All right, so that's the end of row two. So now moving on to row three, we're going to chain up six 
and then flip our work. So for row three, we're actually not going to do another increase right now. We're gonna do another row of just the normal uh, mesh stitch. So that means in the very first row, I'm sorry, very first chain space, you're just gonna make one single crochet. Uh, yeah, one single crochet, then you'll chain up five. And in the next chain space, you'll make one single crochet. All right, so you're gonna do that all the way down row three. In the very last chain space, you'll make one single crochet, and that is the end of row three. Now for row four, we are going to do another row of just the normal mesh stitch. So I'm gonna chain up six, flip my work, and then in that first space, we are going to make one single crochet, chain up five, oops. And then in the next chain space, we'll make one single crochet and continue to do that all the way down this row. Then in the last chain space, you'll make one single crochet and that's gonna be the end of row four. So now we are finally going to make another row of the increase. So you're going to chain up six, flip your work, then you'll make one single crochet in the very first space, chain up five, and then make another single crochet in the same first chain space. So right in here. All right, then you'll chain up five. And in the next chain space, you'll make one single crochet. All right, and you are just gonna repeat that part all the way down this row. So one, two, three, four, five. Then in the next chain space, one single crochet. All right, I'll meet you guys back at the end of row five. And in that last chain space, you'll make one single crochet and that will be the end of row five. So as you can see, the outside of the top will be going straight, whereas the inside of the top or the front panel will be increasing. Now, what you're gonna do for the rest of your front panel is repeat rows one through four until you reach the row before your last row. <laughs> so for example, my front panels are going to be 23 rows long, so I'm going to continue repeating rows 1 through 4 until I reach row 22. And also, another little note, if you want this to be increasing even more dramatically, you can make your increases on every, every other row, every row, whatever you want. Just make sure that you're making your increases on the inside only and not on the outside. So what I'm going to do now is continue to repeat rows one through four until I reach a total of 22 rows. And then once I do that, I'll come on back and show you how to make the straps and finish off the front panel. So I just finished up my 22 rows and just for a little bit of reference, the bottom was about nine inches wide. So now for my very last row, and your very last row, we are going to be making our front tie strap. But with your hook still on your project, we are going to make a chain. So we wanna make sure this is in multiples of three, therefore I'm gonna make a total of 69 chains. So one, Okay, so I just finished making 69 chains. So I'm just going to measure this out for you guys, just so you can see about how long it was. Um, yeah, so it's just about 13 and a half to 14 inches long. So you guys can make this longer or shorter if you like, but I would recommend making it at least this long or longer. So now what we are going to do is go back down on this chain. So first you're gonna skip five of the chains. So we'll start with that very first chain on your hook. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the sixth, sixth chain, you're gonna make one single crochet. 
and I'm just picking up the top loop only, but you can also work in the back bump as well. All right, so now we're gonna chain two, skip two chains, and then make a single crochet in that third chain. Okay, and we're just gonna keep repeating this chain two, so chain two, skip two chains, and then make a single crochet in the third chain. We're gonna do this all the way down our chain. So one, two, skip one, two, single crochet into that third chain, and that's all we're doing. So I will meet you guys back at the very end of the chain. Okay, so this is the final strap right here. Now to connect it all together, you wanna make sure first that you are working on the bottom of your front panel, not any of the sides. And you're going to make a slip stitch into this single crochet right here. So make a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna chain up five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm just gonna make a single crochet in this first chain space. Okay, then we'll chain up five again, and then make a single crochet in the next chain space. So you're just gonna continue to repeat that all the way down this row, and that will be your last row for the front panel. Okay, and that is the end of this first front panel. So let's fix this up here. All right, much better. So I fix it up and it should be looking something like this. Just like so. So now what we are going to do is immediately connect the front panel to our back panel. So we are gonna seam it up on this side right here. So that's why I didn't tell you guys to cut this yarn at all. We're gonna be sewing from here to probably about right here. So for my armhole, I wanted it to be about six and a half inches to seven inches wide. And that means I'm only gonna be sewing, I'm sorry, seaming from here to about here. Now I am a size small, so that gives you a little bit of reference, but you can make this bigger or smaller if you like. Um, this size armhole is gonna give me uh, not a super tight sleeve, but kind of a relaxed sleeve. So just keep that in mind. All right, let me zoom you guys in right here and I will show you how we are seaming these two together. Okay, so I've got the two ends together like this and I've decided I'm gonna go up 10 rows for um, my seam. So I've already chained up one what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to kind of mirror how this row looks. So you see how this chain space is kind of hanging off where um, I guess where my hook is. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be my chain space here. So I'm going to insert my hook not into any of these stitches right here, but into this stitch right here, this like single crochet. So I'm going to insert it into there. And then I'm going to find that uh, single crochet, st crochet stitch on the back and I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch. I'm actually only going to pick up one, uh, one loop. Then I'm going to slip stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through everything and the loop on my hook. Now, well, I hope that was kind of easy to see. But on this end, everything is going to line up on these sides. So what I'm going to do next is in the next... Um, the next row right here, I'm going to make two single crochets. I'm just going to insert my hook into any of these loops, find the back panel, I'm going to do the same, find any of those loops, and make a slip stitch. Okay, so that's one. Then for the second, find another loop, find another loop of back. You can see I'm not going into any specific loops, just whichever I see and slip stitch. All right, now we're getting to a single crochet. So this is the third row. So I'm gonna insert my hook 
I can insert it into the whole stitch, but I'm just gonna insert it into one of the loops, find that single crochet on the back panel, and I'll insert into one of the loops. And the only reason I'm inserting into just one loop instead of the whole stitch is because I think it makes it a little less bulky, but definitely go into the whole stitch or the whole chain if you prefer, if you want it a little bit sturdier. All right, so we're gonna continue doing that. On these chains, I'm gonna make two single crochets and then on the uh, single crochet rows where we find these single crochets, I'm just gonna make one single crochet. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to show you how to seam this bit together. But just continue doing that until you reach, oops, Continue doing this until you reach your stopping point. You could have definitely put a stitch marker where you wanted to stop or just count up the number of rows you want to um, you want to seam up. So I'm just going to continue until I have 10 rows seamed and I will come back once I am done with all of that. Okay, I lied. I actually went up a total of 11 rows and that's just so that I could end on a single crochet. So now what you wanna do is chain up one, grab your scissors, cut, and then pull through. Okay, so this is what your seam is gonna look like once you are done. And my armhole ended up being six and a half inches wide once I had finished up my seam. So now that we are done with our first front panel, I'm going to show you how to connect the yarn on the opposite side and we can get started on the second panel. So really all I'm going to show you for the second panel is how to get the um, yarn on there because it's going to be the exact same thing that we did for our first panel. So we started our first panel on the outside of our top therefore we're going to start our second panel also on the outside of our top so i'm going to place my hook through this corner uh, chain space here i've already made a slip knot so i'm going to pop that on my hook i'm going to actually pull this a little tighter and i am going to chain up six so one two three four five six and that's all you have to do to connect your yarn to get started with the second panel. So I'm gonna do all the same steps that I did for the first panel over here on the second panel. Now, I may come back and show you guys how to seam up this second panel because I think it gets a little bit wonky, but um, yeah, as for the rest of it, just repeat everything we did on the first panel and you will be good to go. So I will see you when you are done with that. All right, so I just finished my second panel and as you can see, I have not yet seamed this together and that's because this side is a little bit different than this side over here. So I'm going to show you guys what I do on this side of the top to seam it together. Now when I say that this side of the top is going to be a little bit different to seam, that's because the rows are not going to line up like they did on the first side of the top. So for example, row one in, I'm sorry, row one on the front panel ends with a single crochet at the top and row two on the back panel ends with a chain on the top. So it's kind of like they're flip-flop, they're mismatched, right? So the way that I did this is really you could just, you know, single crochet where you feel it's necessary until you reach your stopping point, just making sure that you have the same amount of rows stitched up that you did on the first side. Or if you wanna be a little bit more technical, what we're gonna do is still place one single crochet in all of the rows that have the single crochet at the top and two single crochets in all the rows that have the, um, the chain at the top. So I'll kinda of show you what I mean by this. First, we're gonna chain up one, and I'm gonna insert my hook into that first single crochet. Again, for me, I'm just picking up one loop. Now on the back side, on the back panel in row one, I'm gonna place my hook, oops, gonna place my hook in this chain right here, okay? So this will be my one single crochet on the chain 
row, I guess, in the back panel or on the back panel. Then I'm just going to slip stitch these together. Okay, so I've finished seaming up row one on the front of my panel and I finished seaming up half of row one on the back panel. So now I'm moving on to row two for the front panel. So I'll insert my hook into one of these loops on the chains for row two. And then I will finish up row one by placing my hook into one of the chains um, in row one. And then I'm just gonna slip stitch that all together. So I've now completed my first row, complete, completed seaming up my first row um, on the back panel. And I've done half of the seam on the second row of my first panel. It sounds super confusing, but hopefully you guys understand what I mean. Now, like I said, you don't have to do it this way. Also, you can just seam where you see fit until you reach your stopping points. But I'll just continue showing you guys what I do. So where are we? All right, so I'm gonna place my second uh, single crochet in that second row. Okay, and now we have moved on to the second row on the back side. So this is a row that has just a single crochet at the top. So I'm just going to insert my hook to that and complete. All right, so I have now moved on to the third row on my front panel and one, two, three, the third row on my back panel. So I'll insert my hook, oops, excuse me, into the single crochet at the top of the third row. And then I'll insert my hook into the uh, one of these chains on the third row of my back panel. All right, so it's just going to continue doing something like that. So I'll continue in this manner until I reach um, 11 rows. Try to make this as even as you can with uh, your opposite side, your opposite seam, if I could find it. <laughs> uh, but once you're done with that, come on back and I'll show you guys how to start up the sleeves. So I ended up seaming up 12 rows on this front panel and 11 rows on this back panel. And that's only just because these rows are offset. So I had to do a little fumbling at the very end to make sure that I had the same number of chain spaces all the way around this second arm as I did on the first arm. So what you can do or what you should do is count the number of these chain spaces that you have on your first arm. So for me, I had 17. So you count like one, two, three, four, five, 14, 15, 16, and then 17, and you're back at the seam. So I need to make sure that on this second arm, I also have 17, um, 17 chain spaces all the way around. So I had to actually increase my front panel by one row and my back panel, well, it stayed the same, but that's how um, I got 17 chain spaces on my second arm. So you may need to fumble around a little bit with the end of your seam on the second side, but really it's not gonna matter if you're off by just a stitch or two, because again, the only thing that's matter that matters is the arm holes, so the chain spaces. Hopefully that makes sense. This was really hard to explain to you guys. Um, if you have questions, please leave them down below and I will try my best to answer them. But let's just move right on to making our sleeves now. So, well, first, before we even get started with the sleeves, we do need to fasten off this seam. So I'm just gonna chain one, grab my scissors, cut my yarn, then you're just gonna pull that all the way through. So your whole top should be complete minus the sleeves. So what I recommend right now is just to try it on and see how you like it, if you like the fit, um, because the sleeves are the most time consuming part. So if you wanna redo something now, I suggest that you <laughs> do it now. So I'll show you what it looks like on me and then we can get started with the sleeves. Okay, so this is what it looks like on me. Now, as you can see, this is how wide the arms are. I'll show you. That's about how wide my um, armholes are. Just so you can kind of see the back too. Okay, and you just tie it up like this. And that's 
perfect fit for me. I just wanted it right under my bust. You can also see how much this stretches. It really does stretch farther than um, whatever your measurement was. So keep that in mind too. But once you like the fit of this, now it's time to move on to our little arms. So let's just get right into that. Okay. Now before you get started on making the sleeve, you wanna make sure that your seam is now on the inside of your top. So it's gonna be facing right side out. So these sleeves are gonna be a relaxed fit. There's gonna be no increases or decreases um, at all during the sleeve. So it's gonna be very, very simple. So to get started, I am going to insert my hook into the right hand chain space. So right here on the right hand side of the seam. So as you can see, we're kind of skipping all of this right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook into this chain space right here. Now I've already made a slip knot with my yarn. So I'm gonna pop that on my hook. I'm gonna pull it through that chain space. And now I'm going to chain up five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm going to skip over all of this mess. So all of this seam we're skipping over and we're gonna go and insert our hook right into the first, um, the first chain space on the left-hand side of our seam. So I'm gonna insert my hook into here and we'll make a single crochet. Okay, so that is gonna be the only, um, the only chain space that's kind of strange in this very first, uh, very first round of our sleeve. So now we are going to chain up five and make one single crochet in the next chain space. So right here, insert, make a single crochet. And you're gonna chain up five and make a single crochet in each chain space all the way around the armhole. So right in here, one, two, three, four, five. Move that out of the way. Okay, skip to the next chain space and make a single crochet. Just keep doing this until you reach the very beginning of round one. All right, so I am at the very first of our chain spaces on round one. So what I'm gonna do is actually slip stitch into the first chain from round one. So that's this one right here. I'm gonna insert my hook and make a slip stitch. Okay, so that is gonna finish up our round one. So I have 17 of these um, mesh stitches in round one. Now what we're gonna do for round two is actually flip our work. So we're not chaining anything right here. I'm gonna flip my work and then I'm going to slip stitch into this first chain space. So I'm going to insert my hook and make a slip stitch. Okay, and now I am going to chain up five. So one, two, three, four, five. And now we're gonna start with our round two. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next chain space and make a single crochet. All right, then I will chain up five. And in the next chain space, I will make a single crochet. And you are just going to continue repeating this. So chain five and then single crochet into the next chain all the way around for round two, and I will meet you guys at the very end. Okay, so now we are at the very end of round two, and as you can see, I have chained up five in this last chain space, but now I'm going to single crochet into that first chain space from the very beginning of round one. So I'm gonna insert my hook right here in this first chain. So insert here, and we're gonna make a slip stitch. So we'll yarn over, pull through, pull through. Okay, so that's the end of round two. Now for round three, we are again going to flip our work. 
So I'm gonna flip all of this over. In that very first chain space, I'm going to make a slip stitch. So I'll insert my hook, make a slip stitch, and then I'm going to chain up five. So we are repeating round two all the way until we reach the desired length of our sleeve. So again, I'll chain five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna single crochet in the next chain space. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Make a single crochet in the next chain space again. And then I'll continue to do that all the way around round three. So I will show you guys one more time how to finish up round three, and then you should be good to go with the sleeve. All right, I'm right back to the beginning of round three. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did in round two. I'm gonna make a slip stitch in that very first chain space. So right here, that will join round three. Then I'm gonna flip my work, make a slip stitch in the first chain space, chain up five, oops, five, <laughs> and that will start round four. So you are just going to continue to repeat row two, I'm sorry, round two, until you reach the desired length of your sleeve. Now for me, I made 43 rounds for my sleeves and that reached about a little bit before my wrist. But again, this is a really stretchy stitch. So I did actually stretch it out a little bit and it came down to about right here. You should make about 10 rounds of the sleeve, then try it on and see if you like the fit. But if you would like to make this a little bit tighter, what I recommend is that in the very first round, you either skip every other mesh stitch or you work into two mesh stitches, skip one, work into two, skip one, that kind of thing, just so that you make the sleeve a little bit smaller. But just continue repeating round two until you reach your desired length. And once you're done with that, come on back and I will show you how to finish up the sleeve. Okay, so I've just done 10 of my rounds on this sleeve and this is what it's fitting me like so far. So it's kind of like a little cap sleeve. Again, if you wanna make it tighter, just skip some of your mesh stitches in round one. But I'm gonna go finish up this sleeve and I will be right back. So you finish up yours as well. All right. So this is what the whole sleeve will look like. And for me, I did a total of 43 rounds and that was just about 16 inches long. So once you are done with your first sleeve, all you're gonna do is repeat all these same steps over on your other armhole. And once you're done with that, come on back and we're pretty much gonna be done. So I just finished my second arm over here. Now I ran out of yarn, so I only got 39 rounds on the other arm, whereas on the first arm I made 43 rounds, but that's just about 15 inches long for the arm that had 39 rounds. But just make the exact same amount of rounds on your first arm as your second arm. I'm just letting you guys know that I did run, run out of yarn, so one arm is slightly shorter. But after you're done with that second sleeve, the only thing you have left to do is weave in all of your ends and you will be done with this little mesh shrug. And this is the finished product after I wove in all of my ends. Now you can tie it up front just like so. And bam, you've got your little shrug. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If, you've, if you have any questions, please let me know down below. And yeah, that's gonna be the end for this video. So hope you guys have a great day. Bye.